Welcome to Hour 1 of Patriots Lament right here on KFAR. We call this hour the Saturday morning wake-up call. And although it's not directly related to the idea of going out and getting yourself a cup of joe, we do highly recommend that if you want to be awake for this, that you uh, get your coffee or whatever it is you need, because you know what? It's going to be a big hour. Joining us here in the studio, as always, from Bighorn Enterprises, the brain trust that started this program, and actually, uh, in, in full disclosure, makes this program uh, not just possible, but makes the program, because this is basically like a, a two-hour-long infomercial for liberty, I guess is about the best way you can put it, isn't it, Josh? Josh Bennett from Bighorn Enterprises. Good morning. Yeah. The, uh, what did someone call it? The uh, your weekly deprogramming program. Deprogramming program. Does that sound right? No, it does sound right because, I mean, you think about it. From the minute you enter preschool, you go through kindergarten, through the public school, elementary, middle school, high school, and then if you're lucky enough to go on to a public university system, by the time you get done, you are so well-equipped to get your government job, uh, and you have been so effectively turned into a drone that, uh, you know what? Yeah. That you won't mind a drone. Yeah, well, exactly. You're welcome to drones. In fact, you'll wonder why what the big deal is, why people are upset about having drones flying. They're just there to keep us to safe. Hide. Yeah. I was, uh, with this Rand Paul thing this last week, is kind of interesting. On one side, you had uh, Lindsey Graham and McCain just, like, foaming at the mouth, rabidly upset at... Ran for daring to get up there and ask questions about drone strikes because obviously, you know, we we had Lindsey Graham with the NDAA say, you know, we're going to arrest these people and American citizens and they're going to say, I want my lawyer and you're going to tell them to shut up. You don't get a lawyer. You just get to get killed. And we remember when we had McCain talking about the NDAA indefinite detention, he was, you know, when asked directly, so are you saying that an American citizen who's suspected could be arrested and can detained without due process for as long as the president of the military decides? And McCain said, well, absolutely. I think that's what the American people want. Of course, he's looking at the ground while he's saying these things. So the whole deal over the drones was, you know, they want to have drones in the skies here in America. And... and Rand Paul wants the president to promise that he won't shoot people from these drones, which I don't understand why he would waste his time asking for a promise, because really all he got was, well, only in necess- you know, only in extreme mitigating circumstances would we dare to even think of blowing someone away on the land of the United of the home the home of the free and the brave, right? Even though that we already have seen that, you know, he's killing people in other countries, even U.S. citizens. And Alawaki or whatever his name was, he was an American citizen that they killed. And everyone's like, well, you know, he was a terrorist. I've had so many people say, well, he was a terrorist, so he didn't really have any rights. How do, how do we know he was a terrorist? Did, was it his trial that brought the, the evidence to light? Well, I, what, uh, yeah, there was no trial, but the whole point is, so what good is having a Bill of Rights or whatever, or due process? When do you decide due process doesn't count anymore? Well, how, how do we know? And how do you know that he's a terrorist if there's know? no due process? Well, exactly. I mean, because somebody said he was? Barrick said he was. But I'm so no glad that we have somebody that we can trust in the White House to determine who is a terrorist and who is not, who, who therefore deserves to be killed while sitting in a cafe with his son. Right. And his son was killed. No one... That's the brakes. That is the brakes. That's what we were told, that that's the brakes. And then what the uh, the official statement about his son was, well, I would think that if you're a caring father and you don't want your son killed, you better not be a terrorist. That makes a lot of sense. So if anyone in your Especially family... Especially since we all know what it is that makes a person a terrorist because they've They've told us that, that basically... Because he told us. Well, if you, if you question the government, if you take a stand against the government, if you dare to say that the government is evil, you could be, you could be a terrorist. We, we ought to start a... 
You could, could be, be a, a terrorist. terrorist, yeah. Just well, it like doesn't they, matter they, if he was a terrorist. a terrorist. It doesn't matter. He obviously was a part of Al-Qaeda. Who cares? That wasn't the point. The point was he didn't get due process of law. He was an American. His son was killed. No one cares. Rand Paul does this little 13-hour filibuster, which was kind of cool on one hand because it reminded me of Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, and maybe somebody woke up while he was up there, but at the end of the end of the day, nothing changed. The dude that was running the CIA director, he still got nominated, or he got confirmed. confirmed, and policy didn't change. But I am glad that he did it just for the fact that maybe someone looked at it and thought about it. And maybe one person in all of America changed their mind and thought, wait a minute, maybe these, huh, maybe I could get struck down by a drone. And when we look at it, Obama absolutely said, well, only in extreme circumstances. Which but means when he means he gets to decide what an extreme still, circumstance He still has the power. Is. He still has the decision-making power. Right. He and, still has the power to, to order it. And we have Homeland Security telling us what is or could be viewed as terrorism or a terrorist. We've gone through that ad nauseum with uh, if you have certain bullets or if you have certain beliefs, religious or political, or if you have certain food storage capabilities, or even food. So, they want 30,000 drones. I don't, yeah. I talked to a friend about that a long time ago, and he said it's not feasible to have that many because the cost and the operating hours and all this and that. Well, it also would start to interfere with air, air traffic. I mean, there was a, a sighting of a drone it was true. Dangerously close to a commercial airport. What was it, JFK? Right, but then all you have to do is restart to restrict public air traffic, private air traffic. Kind of like what the Soviet Union did. Right. You, you don't. You don't get the state's not going to back down just because some peasants want to fly around the nation. They'll just have to start restricting who can and where can you fly, which is what they're already doing anyways with TSA. To a certain extent, it's just sad. On the way here, <laughs> all this, on the way here, I was driving along and there was this cop car. My pickup sits a little bit higher so he didn't know I could see him. I could just see his lights hiding behind this uh, snow bank. And the way he was positioned was so people come around this corner speeding, then he'll get them. And it just kind of all came together right just that one second there. I thought, how pathetic we are as a people. The American people are so pathetic. We don't have law enf or uh, peace officers. We have law enforcement. So we have, and most people don't even see anything wrong with it. You have a policeman hiding behind a snowbank to catch you doing something wrong. Now, what is that wrong thing? To catch you speeding. Now, is that to protect someone's life, liberty, or property? Absolutely not. It's simply to keep you in subjection to their rule. It's to make sure that you understand you need to obey us. You were going faster than we have said that you are allowed to go. Right. You will obey us. That's what all these things are. When you get pulled over, it's simply a matter of you need to obey your masters. Every law, you will obey your master. We're hoping to have uh, Will Grigg on within the next couple of weeks, and it's going to be super sweet. Who is Will Grigg? Will Grigg is a man out of Idaho who is basically a police whistleblower. He, uh, and he's good. I mean, he points out police brutality, the militarization of police forces in America, and on and on. He's a regular on Lou Rockwell. I believe his website's uh, freedominourtime.com, pro Libertat. Pro Liberté, Pro Libertate, I don't know. Anyways, he's going to come on here pretty soon. He's agreed to, apparently, so it's going to be interesting talking to him. That's basically what he'll talk about, I'm sure. But we have come down to where we're nothing but a bunch of serfs waiting for someone to tell us when we're being bad. And it's no different than several hundred years ago when the king was doing the same thing and parliament was doing the same thing to the colonists. The only difference is, is that they said no. And I was talking with Mike Anderson Some about this. Some of them this. said no. The majority of them did. I was talking to Mike Anderson about this just this morning, that the uh, 
the difference is that um, we see it as being patriotic, right? To we obey because we want to. Well, we want to be patriotic. We want to be good citizens, and on and on. And yet, colonists weren't like that. When they got conscripted in the um, military, they would, when their time was up, they would just leave. And when the British sub, uh, soldiers or British commanders say, hey, you know, dude, duty to king and country, they'd say, eh. They had no loyalty to the king necessarily over the loyalty to their freedoms and liberty. Because then the king was under the law also. No man was above the law. So the law said you're conscripted to this amount of time. When it's over, you're done. See ya. What about your... I mean, you could hear it now if it ha would happen to you. What about your sense of duty? They said, yeah, my sense of duty is to me. Stop and the stop-loss program. Yeah. Prevents soldiers whose time in service is up from leaving. Right. And that happened then, too. And they just would leave. We were talking specifically this morning about a time in Nova Scotia. It's uh, He's reading Conceived in Liberty, which is a fantastic book. And these soldiers basically commandeered a ship, a British warship, and just said, See ya, we're going home. They got stopped, but the point is that they tried anyways. Could you imagine that today when these guys that had the stop-loss program just grabbed their battleship or whatever, or flew their helicopters home or whatever, and say, Hey, I'm done. Time's up. Time's up. It's over. I'm not your slave. I, I don't have to serve you. I'm yeah. not loyal to you, Uncle Sam. Their loyalty was to their liberty. You can see that with, uh, even when the war started, the uh, Revolutionary War, they didn't, they arrested Tories not for being loyal to the king per se, because even when the war started, they were still trying to get their rights as British subjects under the king. But they arrested them for being, um, they would arrest them for being traitors to their countrymen, hmm. to liberty, to their freedoms, because their freedom meant more than their loyalty to the king, because the way they saw it, the king was the one breaking the law. It's just like today, I mean, we can have the same thing today, except for the fact that we won't, our loyalties to this nation, to this uh, government. The uh, colonists were forced to give oaths of allegiance. And basically what that was, where you would give an oath, they were forced to take an oath saying, I will obey the king, I will obey parliament, blah, 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 blah. And if you didn't take that oath, they'd either take your land, burn you, do whatever. And today we have this thing called an oath of allegiance to the flag of the United States. And I don't see any difference to it. Colonists would not, for the most part, they would refuse to take the oath. Oath of obedience, that's what it was. They would take an oath of obedience, and they would refuse. Yeah, sometimes they wouldn't refuse just because they didn't want to die. But we have the same thing today. And we're going through a big, giant cycle that's happening all over again. The difference is that we're not being a people of rebellion, of secession, of... Rebellion is not a bad word when it comes because it, it does have a bad connotation when you think of it as rebellion against good, but we're not doing that. We're, we're not even the rebels. The rebels are the people that are doing what's wrong. The government is breaking the, the quote-unquote law. They put themselves above the quote-unquote law. So are you really rebelling or are you just standing for what's right? All I can, I'm sorry, but all I can think of is the emperor saying, I'm going to crush the Rebel Alliance. <laughs> <laughs> the Rebels. Yeah. And, 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 you know, it's funny that if you think about it from the context of the Star Wars movies, for instance, and I'm sorry to bring this in, but it, it, oh, no. I, I really do believe have to that love Star, Star Wars, Star Wars th says a lot to the state of where we are as a republic. Uh, if you look at it in terms of the historical arc, too, I mean, it goes all the way back to Rome and this idea of what is rebellion. Rebellion to whom? Rebellion to what? If, if you have a government that has overstepped the bounds that are set in place by God and they're ordering you to do things that are immoral, do you not have a duty to rebel? 
And how much, how far do you go with what is unethical or immoral when, let's like look at uh, property issues right here in the borough. Um, we have some good people that want to pass some legislation or resolutions or whatever protecting private property. I don't think such things are needed. I don't believe in laws setting you free. I don't believe that protection laws of property are necessary because as we've talked about over and over and studied over and over on this show with John Locke and James Madison, what property is and the proper role of government is specifically to protect property. So what do they need to pass laws, quote unquote, protecting our property? That well, had nothing to do with it. Because the government is already disobeying its own laws. Right. So we need more laws. So we need the, laws this, to this time. This time the government is going to obey the laws that, that we pass. Right, because they always do. Right. Even though they set themselves above it's the law. So interesting why do we too, have because every single laws. every single law manages to restrict your freedom just that much more. I mean, even you look at that uh, law that was being proposed to quote give teachers the right to carry guns in schools here in Alaska. They already have that right. Sure. The school districts are the ones that are imposing a restriction against it, and therefore it would have to be the policy of the school district that changes, not some law down there in Juneau. However, the law in Juneau would have required, in order to give them that right, that they attend a gun safety class first. It also would have required that any of the, stu that any of the teachers that wanted to carry in a school get a concealed carry permit. Hmm. So it would have been more restrictive than what is already in place. Right, because on Alaska you don't have to have... No. You don't have to have a, a permit to carry a, right. a gun. Carry concern. concealed. So why do we need property laws? Isn't the proper role of government to protect in the first place? So well, The reason why we need property laws is because the, the government is already disobeying the natural right. law about property. And, and what good is it going to do? Destroying to our property. What, what good would it do to create a new law out of thin air to protect something that they are already disregarding the natural law that's there? What happens if you disregard the natural law of gravity, Josh? You can get hurt. That's the problem. Yeah. They don't have any fear of retribution. Exactly. And we like to point out, too, over and over, that once you make a law and codify something, then people in the norm eventually think, well, <sighs> the law gives us the right to blah, blah, blah which government always takes advantage of and says, well, this law granted you this right, so now we're going to have to repeal this law. Or this law protected this, but we see now that it's not correct, so we need to change, repeal, whatever. I just This whole thing with these property rights laws that they're trying to get, do here, I just don't understand. Well, it's the people's fault. People just need to say, my property, my right, screw you. That's basically what it comes down to. If we're going to ask our assemblymen or councilmen to do the job for us, then we've already lost. We've already lost the right. That's what you're relying on. Our founding fathers, and I'm not talking about the, you know, the guys that we see on the board. I'm talking about the people, our predecessors here, wouldn't have done any such thing. They just stood up for their rights. They said no. You didn't have policemen hiding behind constables hiding behind bushes to see if your buggy was going too fast well they there wouldn't put up with there it there wasn't the danger of a runaway buggy you wouldn't put up with it that there is today of, of cars just it's enslavement they wouldn't put up with the enslavement and that's what we have today it's and i'm just about sick and tired of it because i'm sick and tired of people saying well <laughs> pass this law pass that law didn't Gun rights, nullification, uh, blah, 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 blah. Now, I am a little fuzzy on the early American history in terms of the, the years between the first colonists in the, what was it, the late 1500s mm -hmm. up, up through uh, up through 17, so almost, you know, over 100 years, basically, right. of the early colonists up before the revolution. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a little fuzzy on it because I went to a public, to a public school system. But my understanding is that most of the people that came, whether they were the Puritans that were coming to escape the religious persecution in England, or, or whether it was the 
people who had an opportunity to start over their life because they'd been in debtor's prison and they were getting an opportunity for a restart, or even if it was people like the, um, well, the Catholics that went down there and started some of the southern colonies. Uh, all, all of them were coming here because this was a, an opportunity where they weren't going to have a whole bunch of regulations telling them everything they could do, and they would have an opportunity to basically run their own life. Is they that, seceded. So they, they basically said, you guys have screwed up. How about it? Our country, we're leaving. Right. And so they came here and they started over. Obviously, they didn't do everything right. There were a number of things that were codified in the very beginning that were downright evil, like slavery. Um and you look at the religious, they were humans. the religious persecution that happened in the northern colonies that they had come to, to yeah. escape from. Obviously, yeah, a lot they of pushed their own religious. A lot of mistakes were made, but the where would we Quakers. go now? I mean, you say you're sick of it. You say you know, my 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 inclination right now, I don't believe even if we stood and fought. Yeah, we'll grab the boys. Even if we even if we stand and fight at this point, would we have an opportunity? To win, I don't think we could. I don't think even if we, even if everybody you know, Josh, even if everybody out there who believes even remotely like you do stood up against the government and fought it, we would not win. We would lose militarily. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, they, we, we are not allowed to have tanks <laughs> or fighter jets, or and you even to say the word bomb, you're going to have a whole bunch of FBI agents knocking on your door. Homeland Security bought 2,700 tanks last week. No, they're armored personnel carriers. Pretty close. Yeah, I mean, that's close enough. It's an armored vehicle. During during the sequester. A mine-resistant armored personnel. During the sequester. Yeah. They have enough money to buy $50 million in new uniforms for the TSA and 2,700 armored personnel carriers. So I at this point, my inclination is to say, you know what? You guys have screwed this up. Have at it. I'm leaving. We can leave. But where do we leave? Where do we go? Where do you go at this point to start over, to hit the reset button? Is there any place left on the globe? Probably some small socialist country. Maybe Venezuela. Now they've got a... <laughs> now you'd probably be better off there. No joke. They've got I mean, a... At least there they don't... <laughs> well, Anuko Chavez just died. So, yeah. At least you know. there they don't... Uh, for the most part, they don't care about every little detail of your life. I don't want drones flying around just so they can look at you in your bedroom. Hey, snacks. Speaking of drones flying around. Woohoo! Oh, Aaron. Aaron. Been outside since 9.01. Oh, lies. Aaron. <laughs> Aaron Bennett joining us now. All right. Are you saying that you weren't here on time and you got locked out of the building? One minute. Wow. In, in America, that's four minutes away from being late. Oh, well, this isn't America. This is Alaska, so... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, Josh, we got about uh, two minutes here before the Fox News at the bottom of the hour. Uh, and so far, we've talked about drones. We've talked about armored personnel carriers. We've talked about uh, people trying to pass new laws to protect us from the laws that are already in Broken. place. And Idiots. Seems like all those issues you guys talked about are really just private property issues at the core. Private property issues? How so? That's why we brought it up to property no, no, I mean, how is it a private property issue if, if you're talking about speeding on the highway? Aren't, aren't you jeopardizing other people's lives by going faster than the government tells you you can go? No, you already know that's not true. There's, there's no victim in that. Well, there could be. Sure. But just like driving too slow, just like driving the speed limit itself, you could. Be. I was all excited to get in here and make a point, but we're at the bottom point there. It. We're at the bottom. You know, we got an hour. We got a minute. You, you tell me you can't make your point in a minute. Probably not. Wow. Okay. Well, we also have two lines on hold. Do you want to give them a chance to Let's say have something one in, of them. in a minute? All right. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Got to be lightning fast. Are you there? Hello. Yeah. Who is this? This is Chuck. Chuck, go fast. Um. Yeah. I read a letter to the editor that sometime this week. Somebody was talking about gun control. And somebody said, "There's, you know, about." God-given rights, and they said there's no God-given rights, and um, all the rights we have, I believe, are given by God. And I, I don't understand people who are sort of think like we do, who don't have a place for the, the creator of the universe and the whole scenario, because if you don't have him, and I've been reading through the Old Testament for the, I don't know, I read it every year at least once, but, uh, you know, all our laws and everything come from, from there. And, uh, you know, you look at the foundation of this country, and that, it seems like that's 
being neglected by a lot of people who who want all these freedoms, but uh, you know don't acknowledge where they came from. Yeah, that's a that's a good point. There is uh, that is a problem in my mind, but at the same time, I think that we can't. There's a place to argue that point with with those specific people. At the same time, you can't divide yourselves when you're fighting for the same thing on where the rights come from originally. Because even the founding fathers had a huge variety of what they thought our rights came from. You had deists, atheists, Christians, on and on. But Coming up on the Fox News, you've got it on the Saturday morning wake-up call on KFAR. I love the way you can hear the chains being dragged there in the background of that song. That's Not the best it. part about it. Well, the, the, the graphics on the uh, the movie weren't, in terms of modern standards, not, not particularly amazing. But for the time period, they were state-of-the-art. And Robin Hood, of course, the old Disney classic. But I, I love that song, too. Just you, you see everybody, the whole picture is painted of a people that are downtrodden, that are just dragging their way through from paycheck to paycheck, from day to day, from meal to meal, just trying to survive under the oppression of the government and not being able to pay their taxes yeah and that's you know, a, that's, that's f- just a cartoon though people don't go to jail for not paying their taxes. oh wait a second yeah they do there's a story this week in the juno empire it's a woman in juno who according to the city and bureau of juno did not remit the proper sales taxes that she was supposed to remit to them as a business owner and therefore she had just had a warrant issued for her arrest because down there, they have a, in the borough of Juneau, they do have police powers, unlike here in the, in the Fairbanks North Star Borough. So when uh, you go to jail for tax reasons, does that pay your debt? No. What? No, well, when you get out, you still owe it? Mm-hmm. Or do you just don't get out? Well, you can't have a debtor's prison, Aaron. Oh, I see. So wait, wait, wait how, a minute. How, how are you supposed to earn the money to pay back the taxes that they say you owe if you're in jail and you can't? Man, that sounds a lot like the debtor's prison argument, why they got rid of them. Isn't there, isn't it a debtor's prison? You owe money, you go to jail. No, it absolutely is. That's why it's funny. It is funny. That's not funny at all. Well, yeah. It's disgusting. <laughs> well, it's, it's funny it's because people think that we don't, that you can't go to jail for owing money to someone, but absolutely you can. Well, right, the state, the state claims a total different uh, moral code of conduct for itself. Of course. Well, you couldn't have a state if they didn't. When you were talking about the uh, law enforcement officer uh, and trying to creep on people, I was sitting out in the truck. I was thinking to myself, um, if you and I started a, a law enforcement agency, right? Let's and we it. went to, <laughs> let's do it. If we went to all the people in Fairbanks and we said that we were going to provide them with protection. But in our contract, we weren't going to tell them how much protection we were going to provide. We we also weren't going to tell them how much we were going to charge to protect them or how much that would change each year. If we told them that um, part of protecting them would be to protect them from themselves, so on and so forth, including even maybe demanding that they disarm themselves mm-hmm. as part of our protection. Would anybody anybody in Fairbanks go for that deal would they sign our contract for our protection i hope not <laughs> i hope not but i bet there's someone that would well there might be some one That's but nice by and large people. no one would sign that contract would right you sign that contract steve i you know what i not only would not sign that contract i would do everything i could to undermine you getting that contract in place in the first place because you know what if if the rest of the people of fairbank signed a contract giving you the right to come out and start enforcing their laws on me without my consent. But what about the that, social that's not the mind That's not the mind-boggling part, Steve. The mind-boggling part would be not necessarily that I would oppress you, but that you would sign up for that same protection without me agreeing what I was going to protect you from or how much it would, how cost. Much it would cost and how much protection it would provide. And, and what you'd be protected from. That's the greatest part. And if you, Right. And if you did sign that contract, wouldn't it be in my best interest to keep uh, a, at least a semi-state of um, crime going? I, if I Even if I had to, I would create scenarios of crime like speeders 
and hide behind bushes. Oh yeah. If you don't have <laughs> you don't If stop nobody those would people. sign if nobody would sign up for that on a um on a personal level, like a contractor level, why would they do that with government? A friend of mine got pulled over for his windows being tinted too much this week. Good. I hope that they scratched it with a razor like they usually do, so he had to get them fixed. I don't know. They impounded his car, though. Oh, of course. He's can't, dangerous. He can't uh, allow something like that. A dangerous, he was pretty dark dangerous. Window. He had a stroke a while back, and you know those people that have strokes. They're so agile afterwards. You just never know when they're going to do a double backflip kick to the head. Oh, yep. They all they're like post traumatic stress disorder. Those. People with strokes. I mean, like yeah. all all veterans, basically mentally ill. Isn't that what Diane Feinstein said this week? That yeah, all I, I think all are Americans are mentally ill. I would agree with if she would have said that statement. I would have probably given it a little more credence. Would have thought about it a little more. I would say from the. Uh, I mean, I guarantee this from watching McCain and Lindsey Graham. Those two guys have got to be literally mentally insane. He's, well, well, I don't watch the those people, people that so the, actually the people that vote them in time after time after time after time have got to be mentally insane. I wish. Where is he from? Arizona. Yes, McCain? McCain's. Right. I wish Arizona would secede from the union, and like go be part of Mexico or something or Venezuela. There are a number of Mexicans that would like to have Arizona back. They can have it. They can have Arizona. They can have South Carolina, Florida. Lindsey Graham. They can have all those. In fact, I would like the whole of the lower 48 secede from Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> we won't put up a fight. Yeah. We'll just Not bow Hawaii, and say though, you, want to, you want to keep Hawaii. No, we we got to have somewhere to go when That's we're true. freezing. We <laughs> well, we, we still have the territory of Guam. You could go to. You know what? No, because Guam would be seceded with the lower 48. All the the territories. islands and territories. You got the Virgin Islands too, right? The you US get. Virgin I wanted to go back where you guys. Yeah. Um, Ended up ultimately uh, talking about private property. By the time you got to the half hour there, I mean, to me, the whole conversation is clear that the issue is private property. Sure. Property. Um, and once you guys reached that point, I, um, I thought about Hop's view on that. That uh, Basically, here, here's the idea how ludicrous it is to believe you have any kind of private property protection. Is it, if you take... Um, if I gave you a house for four years and I said that you couldn't have any of the capital, um, capital stock of that house, but you could ex uh, um, exploit it for four years for as, as much money as you could, you wouldn't have any interest in its capital stock. You wouldn't have any interest in what it would be worth four years from now or any interest at all in in the longevity of it you would like be a, there like a renter right you would essentially be like a renter and your interest would be obviously very short-sighted to get the most that you could as fast as you could and the shorter amount of time that you had that uh, opportunity the more ruthless you'd be so to think that if you give which we do give politicians the opportunity to covet all of our property for us to think that their short amount of time that they're in office that they wouldn't rape us for as much as they possibly could is just ludicrous 40 percent ludicrous it's like the uh they're talking about the aerial wolf hunts and people are like well why don't they open up that to this and that and they're trying to actually logically think out why well why aren't they just letting uh you know, your Joe Blow go out there and trap them, or why didn't they just put a bounty and blah, blah, blah. I'll tell you why. Because it's a lot of fun to jump in a helicopter and fly around and shoot wolves. And they have the right to use that property, and they have a short amount of time to use it because, you know, you got to retire someday. So which would you rather do if you're Mr. Head Honcho? Are you going to say, well, let's let the serfs go out and maybe gain a little bit of monetary value from you know go out and trap a few wolves go out and kill their own wolves just say we'll put a bounty up i mean i don't even want them to put up a bounty but whatever i mean the market will buy wolves obviously 
But is that is that what you're gonna do? Or are you gonna jump in a super I know sweet what I helicopter? Would do. I would be flying around shooting the piss out of them. That's right. <laughs> To me, I mean, honestly, sure, that would jump be a in the really good time. <laughs> I would your enjoy AR-15, that thoroughly. AR, oh, heck, get it. An M60 would be a lot more fun because then you could pretend you're a G.I. Joe or yeah, something. Yeah, there'd be wolf parts around. all do, over do, do, them. Do, 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 do. I mean, how, how, would you, how would you harvest the pelts, though, if you did that? They're not going to. What? That's the whole point. That's what they want to do, though. That's more fun. That's so what you they, can't not, logically... Not what they want to do. That's what they are doing. Right. That's what they have done. You can't logically figure out why they would do this or that. It is once illegal you for logic, us to, yeah. ha- to hunt from the air. I know. And yet they pay. We pay. Right, but Josh, is, know. But Josh is trying to get why, get to the point of why that would why that would be not not why it is. We right. know why it you is. You can't logically figure out what their purpose is because there is no logic behind it. It's simply the fact they want to fly around and shoot wolves themselves because it's fun. It's simply short time preference. Right. That's they it. get to do it. Right. I have the right to do this. Why? The, the because shorter I amount don't. of time that a guy has. The more exploitive he'll be. Yep. And you're and arguing exactly for a monarchy, Aaron. I mean, in all aspects of life. Um, it, that's why I'm so opposed to term limits. I think that um, we should vote in lifers. <laughs> I don't like that one either. Well, I don't like any of it. And but it works out so well with the Supreme Court, lifers. doesn't it? Hmm? Works so well with the Supreme Court. Having all those people that are in for life? Who does more damage? A uh, Supreme Court justice that's in for life or an uh, ambitious politician that's in for two years? Mm-hmm. That's, I, I'd have to chew on that one because I think they all do a lot of damage. Yeah, they're equally. I, I'd say, if, why can't we reinstate the old adage of mind your own business? Because we have government? This is what I'm saying. Are tell you the... Tell the oh. It all comes down to theft. They do mind their own business. Their business is your business. Right. It, they're minding their own business in, in the fact that their their business is to exploit because that's and the position that they're in. Right, because you are their property. If, if well, they, no, no, yes, you I don't. Are. Think... If they, the state claims the right to kill you, then you're their property. If you can dispose, if you're the ultimate arbitrator of disposal, you own it. That's true. And the reason they're so exploitive is because they take turns owning it. Mm-hmm. It's not a permanent ownership. They don't, they're not handing anything to posterity. Right. Bush is like, I can spend $4 trillion in eight years. And Obama's like, that's weak sauce, bro. I can spend $5 trillion in four. And now they're arguing over who's going to... This is like the sequester there. <laughs> you know, the Democrats, ultimately, the this whole thing over that is the Democrats want to raise the spending... The yearly spending by 2.7 trillion dollars over the next 10 years. So in the next 10 years, they want to see it at 2.7 trillion more per year. The other side only wants 2.6 trillion dollars in more spending in the next 10 years. So we're the argument's over 100 billion dollars over the next 10 years. Pocket change. Yeah. There's no hundred billion sin. dollars is a lot of money if you have a bunch of special interest projects. It's a lot of money if you give it to me. It's not a lot of money when I mean you've seen those caricatures where they have hundred dollar bills stacked in hundreds, millions, a hundred million dollars, and then the pallets come in when you hit a billion, and then you know semi truckloads come in when you got a hundred billion, and then when you hit a trillion, you got like Eiffel towers just stacked. Twin towers stacked all over, full of what? Sixteen football fields. Isn't, Trillions. Isn't all of it stolen money? No, some of it's printed. Which that's, helps with that's that. Still, that's still stolen, <laughs> that's though. I mean, stolen if, money. If they go and they print money, it, it reduces the value of the money that you put in the bank. Or that's why they do it. That is why it they do it. Reduces their debt, which is what's ultimately going to happen. We've talked about this. The only way they can get out of the debt they have now is hyperinflation, because then, wee, hey, China, here you go. I printed this last week, says $100 trillion. We got $99 trillion free money from you now. I mean, they're already talking about a trillion-dollar coin. Literally, people that actually think like that would be a good idea. 
That's how stupid. And this is the people that are elected in office actually think that printing a $100 trillion coin is the fixed answer. Because then we could just put it in the bank and then we got a $100 trillion more dollars, right? And it's cheaper than printing you know, off all them you're, bills. You're talking about people that get elected to Congress. These are the same cal caliber people that think that if too many military end up on the island of Guam, it's going to capsize. Well, it will. Uh, that's the It'll first time over. I've heard that. And I think you just hurt something in my head. Are you being serial right now? Yeah, a couple about weeks, the coin? Yeah. 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 Trillion dollar coin. He wanted, to have a, uh, there. he wanted to have a study done. And there were several people that thought it was a good idea. And then one of I think it was Wrangle, might not have been him. One of them said, well, if we're going to print one, why don't we just print a, like 10 of them? Then we'd be in the bank. Well, that's how most of the politicians view money in the first place. It's not something to be earned. It's not something to be worked for. It's not something. It's not west, uh, wealth to be created. It's something to be appropriated. So if they can, I have to not it. talk. I had to not talk for a minute so I didn't cuss on the radio. So if, <laughs> if I couldn't think of any words to say that didn't involve some pretty profane, um, yeah. You're very, not good. Not you're good. Very, you're very colorful man, there, Mister Bennett. It was about to get colorful. I wonder. If they can, if they think they can print money, and that has value, why do they bother taxing us? Well, you might, now you're really hurting my brain. I think it's simply to keep us underfoot, subservient. <sighs> what a, what other reason would there be? I'm still be? trying to grasp what you're telling me. You're telling me that some congressman did they propose that we print a couple Absolutely. of coins? Absolutely. It's got great. I mean, if you look it up, they actually got a picture Trillion of a proposal. Coin. Has yeah. the coin actually been minted? I don't know if it has. I, I, thought, I, I thought I saw a picture. Is that just a prototype of what the coin what is would the, like? What would be the point? I don't get that. To pay off the debt. It's cheaper to just print up a coin than to go about all that business of printing up $100 bills. That costs money. And then you just put I'm it having, in the treasury. I'm having a problem not swearing He just swearing wants to again. have, you know... The Fed prints off this trillion dollar coin, gives it to the Treasury, and Treasury puts it in the bank, and bang, we got another trillion dollars to spend. I, I'm, I'm thinking back what you said about why, why they tax us if they really believe that they can just print up the money. I think because at some point the reality kicks in that if there's no money in the bank, you can write as many checks as you want to. It doesn't actually put any money there. These guys don't think so. They don't have what any What boggles my mind is... is I mean, when you break it down to a singular coin rather than individual units of a trillion, right? That just puts it into perspective, doesn't it? Hmm. Treasury's already printed two trillion dollar coins. So they did print them. They did actually mint them. Mm-hmm. Nice. So our, our, wonder, problem, our financial problems are over then. I wonder if Barrick's face is on it. I gotta coin. see this thing. Coin. Whose face is on the coin? <laughs> I don't know. These guys are Ron good. Paul's. <laughs> Render unto Ron Paul. What is Ron Paul's then? It's amazing. It, well, it's just it's crazy when you when you take um, when people think about inflation, they think about trillions of dollars. But when you break that down into a single coin, yeah, yep, yeah, that's just crazy. Jim had a good point. It with the, helps uh, you lifers. realize that there's no, um, <coughs> there is no value. Jim had a good point with the Supreme Court guys. Even though they're lifers, they still don't have ownership of the resources. No, I I know that. I I I said all it does is expound the problem. Makes it worse. Right. When you're in there for two years, you're like gung ho right. to do I, something. Right. I didn't understand. say that if you if you have the the you wanted to. No, I didn't. If you have the power, you're going to exploit. And of course, it's human nature wouldn't let you do anything else. Let's I don't take think. those two guys. There's actually see if they stayed on. Oh, We're up to yeah. three lines that are stacked up. Make Four, five, eight. Talk minutes. is Gosh. the number. Okay, there's one that didn't wait. Here's one. Good morning. I Who's this? Either. Hi, this is Claudio. Claudio, hey. thanks for your patience. What's on your mind? <laughs> hey, uh, you know this why they tax us is it's all about control and slavery. Yes. Uh, why do we have an army? We have the most armed people in the whole world. Nobody would dare to come here just by the citizens to be army. The army is to control the people. You don't need the army, you know, unless you want to control the people and spend an empire around the world. Because the people ourselves 
enough to self defend the country. Yeah. You know, no, exactly maybe, we need, right. maybe we need a navy, maybe we need the air force, but you don't need army. Army is for us. They don't need the army for defend the country. They need the army to control us. That and to spread empire. That's make right. Us. They're not gonna make us. Well, they're trying to make us. They have another bill. I don't know mm -hmm. if you saw this, Claude. They have another bill right now where they're trying to um, basically force kids from 18 to 25 to do public service for the federal government. National service. You can either choose to have armed service mm -hmm. or choose to go out and be a part of the uh, this Obama Corps thing or whatever you, you I think it's it. in front of Congress right yeah. now. Yeah. Mand so many mandatory people. national service for 18 to 25 year olds. And so many people even call this show and talk about that. I, how that would be a good idea. Three years ago, Josh, I would have supported that idea. Are you serial? I am. I well, I'm, even at my I am, I am actually, status point, I don't think I could have hey, supported that. Holy cow! Yeah. Well, no, I, I, I was never really a neocon. Uh, I I certainly believe, however, <laughs> that. That citizen citizenship. I mean, basically, basically, this is how much of a statist I was, and I didn't realize it. I believed that citizenship should have been reserved for those who actually served their country, like whether you There's served a lot in the mili that military that, or whether you served in a civilian corps or whatever else. I mean, I was way gone down that road, and I don't know if it was because of my government indoctrination of when I you know, growing up, or whether it was my government indoctrination from my time in the military that made me Most be likely. believe that. Uh, but I honestly, honestly believed that, and I felt that I felt like taking the fight that we were in, this whole war on terror, taking it to the enemy and fighting in their backyard was much preferable to fighting it in our backyard. Now I've gotten to the point, Claudio, where I'm honestly questioning how much terrorism there really <laughs> is, or how much there would be if we weren't out there committing terrorist acts on their territory in the first place. Al Qaeda is here to stay. Hundreds of billions of them. You know, yep. that's a good point with uh, when you look at what you just said about citizenship and what you're talking about, though, is citizenship and loyalty to a government. Yeah, absolutely. The Pledge of Allegiance to the government, to the flag of that government. And we think that, well, if you want to have protection, quote unquote, from this government, then you need to serve it. Where. It's amazing that they've gotten people to the point where they think that way because, like we started the show out with, that's what uh, the king had people doing that too. You had to give oaths of obedience to the king. Yeah. And it was like, what, 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 we're not obedient to the king. What? How's that again? But we have that again now. It's, I'm all fine for it. It just needs to be a choice. If you want to serve the federal government, go ahead for free. And if you don't want to, oh no, you'd we, I don't think it would make be for life. free. They're gonna they're gonna pay people with our tax money. Oh yeah, come on. Well, I'm just saying if there's a trade off. Yeah, I don't get the state's protection if I don't go join, and then they don't. They promise not to tax me or pillage me and blah blah blah. That's a good trade off. That, that would be your awesome public. That would be your tough. public contract, your social the, the, contract. The, the beauty of it, though, is that even if you do serve, you still get taxed. I mean, you look at the the, ta the tax rate that, like, the military or the police officers, they don't have a special tax rate. Well, when no, they go they get overseas, taxed on their tax money. Right. That's funny. So there's another point. Uh, when they end this slavery, soon after they they uh, institute the Federal Reserve, the Central Bank, and then. The same is that same year they put the IRS to to get money to give to the bank. So they just uh, you know they end up with slavery of the black people and they figure out a way to slave everybody instead. Yeah, they did a good job. <laughs> <coughs> Thanks for the call, Absolutely. Claudia. Right, Appreciate it. Four five eight talk is the number. We're going to take that other call in there, Josh. Having, Having the blacks friend. be slaves just wasn't enough. We need everyone. <laughs> Which was socially correct. Sure. All right, they didn't hold. We got. I couldn't uh, stand it. We got about three and a half minutes here until the Fox News at the top of the hour. I had to follow Claudio. I'd hang up too. Yeah. Well, man, I, I mean, it's it's so. I, I need like a subtitle machine when. I'm, I'm I like when he calls in because he comes from a socialist country. And we've all got to talk to him about that quite a bit. And it's interesting when you look at. Uh, 
the differences between there and here. And he's actually said some things to Aaron and I both, I know, that have made us sit back and think about it. And one of those things was in uh, Brazil. The people there don't even understand what the word liberty is. I don't even know if that's in their vocabulary. Probably is. But they don't understand it. It's not something that they do. They even think about. And yet, here, and his, I think the way he put it was, even your saggy pants punk. No, that's walked, the way I that put it. But that, that's essentially what he I said. Think he's at a skater or something. Yeah, you, even your your biggest low life or degenerate will, when he's being accosted by a cop or any 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 of his rights that are being violated, he will. He'll it's, cite the rights that he knows that he has and freak out, and then it's hard he knows he's he deserves for no reason, just deserves freedom and liberty. Right. He doesn't even know why. Right. And Claudio's point is down there in Brazil. Um, at least the way that I took his point to be was your average citizen doesn't even have that concept. They don't, they don't have any inkling that they deserve anything. Uh-huh. Most of the world over. Oh, hang on a second. Thing. How long is it going to be before Americans don't think that either? I, I mean, think I, that's I, going to be a hard one for him to take from us. Are you sure? Yeah, I think so. Every, just because every it's total in total moron that's a state or a chest pounding status. At the same time, doesn't trust the government, even though every, all of his ideas are contradictory. Yeah, the left he actually still hates the state for guns, some reasons. Like it's going out of style, and cold dead finger statements flying out of his mouth nonstop. And like Josh said, even the left guys hate the state. Everybody hates the state. Yeah, they hate the state for some reason. They want them to use it for different reasons, or the right hates the states for different st- things and wants to use the state for their own purposes. Then you got folks like us, we just hate state. We don't want to use it against nobodies. You just need to chillax, man. I'm chilled. You just, you just need to take it down a notch. Because you know what? I love the state, man. It's all going to be okay. They're going to take care of us. They have been. Now, now I'm the, taking care of the They've drones been taking care of us at our expense. And, <laughs> and the armored personnel carriers, they're here to take care of us. They're I not, hope that they'll give my kids a ride in one someday. I've ridden in one before. It's fun. Especially if you're tied up in the back. I wonder if they'll rent them out for, like, weekends. Only to the buddies. They need to uh, bring it down to the summer solstice. See on the other side of the news. <laughs> Four, five, eight, talk is the number if you want to get in queue. <laughs> and welcome to Patriots Lament right here on KFAR. It's local talk radio, but we are streaming live on the web at KFAR660.com. We are also in the, uh, actually, your smartphone. If you've got a smartphone, you can download the free TuneIn Radio app and be a part of the program there as well. Uh, Joining us in the studio, as always, we've got Aaron Bennett of Far North Tactical, and just so people know in terms of the context where he's coming from, uh, somebody who has been active in providing supplies to people who like to survive uh, in terms of a post-apocalyptic scenario, right? I mean, that's that's pretty much what you're all about, right? Okay. I don't know. Uh, Far North Tactical is no longer in business. Well, I, I understand that the store is no longer open, but in terms of your background, that you've been, now you're working construction. And... No, I've always worked construction. Uh, I've started recently to drive a semi-truck. I went out and bought my own, and uh, yeah, that's what I've been doing lately. But um I still am um, in, in the business of selling tactical gear. It's a passion of mine. That's right. That's kind of and I'm, I and I'm at, hoping yeah. to get uh, an opportunity here shortly to get something rolling again. We've also got from Bighorn Enterprises, <laughs> in uh, Burrow? your brother, Josh Bennett. And Josh, uh, basically your your company is a transportation slash construction slash whatever people need kind of a business, right? You got money, we can do it. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good money. You got money, we can do it. I'd like to, we can help you spend it. <laughs> I'd like to build a, a new airport out in some marshland. Can you do that? Yeah, it we're does arts. not matter what you pay us, as long as you pay us a lot of it. <laughs> yeah, we're actually involved with that non-existent gas pipeline that's going in. That everyone's talking about no one's doing. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. 
And this last week, I heard several people, eh, they've been shitting on their thumbs for 30 years, and they're never going to do anything. Well, they're slowly banging away at it. Yeah, they are doing something. Of course, the state will, you know, they'll mess it up. People will want something now, and they'll fight over the $2 billion. Actually, I heard someone the other day say, it's actually $2.5 billion giveaway. Again, back to that, that term giveaway to deal with taking less mm -hmm. of what is theirs or ours or what, I don't know. So all very fuzzy when it comes to the issue of oil. It's really not Because of our constitution. Fuzzy. What people in political power believe that it's theirs. They deserve it. It's their turn in power. So if I, if I want more oil money, all I have to do is get elected? Is that what you're telling me? Pretty much. Mm -hmm. I wonder if my wife's listening. She made me promise never to run for office until my, my youngest was uh, 18, and then she just kept on having babies. <laughs> so my, now my youngest is one, so I've got at least 17 more years. Since. She must not have understood the monetary gain you can get from being an elected official. Well, I mean, if you think about somebody like Ted Stevens, who... Uh, yeah, I mean, he had all kinds of ill-gotten gain that people no. made excuses for. I mean, yeah. like the, my favorite is the thousand-dollar massage chair, which is in was in his office. But it wasn't his for his use, but it wasn't his. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't understand. He's gone. He is. All right, there's where plenty we... more jackholes to fill his place. <laughs> Actually, there's one in there right now. <laughs> <laughs> where are we going this hour? Well, no one's calling in, so I guess we're done. We have to talk to you? I better put my phone down. Yeah, quit Facebook and gosh, what a bane on society. Facebook? Yes. Technology in general? No, Facebook, period. Oh. oh. You wanna do you wanna really wrap your mind around something in terms of technology and where we're at as a society? How many people do you know, honest to goodness, know how to build a car? Not how to fix a car, but how to create a car. This is something I was thinking about the other day. You know, it kind of goes back to the uh, whatever happened to Penny Candy idea and, you know, I am a pencil. Remember that essay? Mm -hmm. uh, that, that where we are right now, there are so few people who actually even understand the, the manufacturing process, uh, how we get any of our goods. And most of our manufacturing jobs have been shipped out of the country. If something were to happen, God forbid, we would have to start up the division of labor again? Well, oh, no. no. See, that's, that is the anomaly of the division of labor. That's the state. See, is, it always takes care of itself. Um, that I don't have to be good at, I don't have to know how to build a car. Um, all I have to know how to do is take any other different resource and turn it into something that, that I can trade, sell. That you are good at. Right, that I am good at. Um, even if Josh is predominantly better than me at everything. Pretty much. And I am worse than him at everything, obviously. Mostly. <laughs> You're making it hard to make my point. <laughs> Still, Josh, would, Josh wouldn't have time to uh, focus his attention into everything. So even if I was uh, lesser as far as um, what I was given by God or whatever else in my abilities... I would still have uh, the ability to trade and barter and um, enhance my life. What it is that you can do. Exactly. Because there may be something. I don't know what it could possibly be, but there may be something that you all, could do that I would want. All the people that look at uh, people that are better off and uh, despise them, and basically hardline socialists and things of that nature, they don't understand that wealth is created from it doesn't matter where they're at in that social structure they the wealth would be created from the division of labor not from taking it away if everybody on the planet all had the exact same amount of property and all had the exact same um physical attributes they all had the same skill set and they all produced oranges where would how would anybody monetarily gain? Even the most brokest guy with the least amount of oranges couldn't gain more oranges because nobody would want to trade oranges for oranges. What good would it do to, for me to hand Josh an orange and him to hand me one back? 
Right. The guy that would be rich would be the guy that built, All right, that put would, himself in an apple orchard. That would be the, that's the basis of socialism, that we make everybody exactly equal and totally destroy the division of labor. There, then that right there is the issue. How many people do you know that actually have skills anymore that go beyond just working for somebody else? Well, the skills are there. The skills are what are needed, basically. There's nothing beyond that. If people don't want to go out and do their own thing, I mean, basically the the way labor is right now. Well, first of all, there's no incentive to go out and make yourself better because 40, 50, 60, 70 percent of it's taken from you through taxation and theft. And the rest of it, people that just go and get a job with someone, that's fine. And the market still smashes on, um, despite. despite Despite the fact that so much is expropriated from the individual. Yeah, we do. We smash away. Right. Even though... That's why um, we get robbed. China was able to recognize that. And even though they're a communist nation, they've grown beyond... I mean, as far as how fast they've grown, beyond what any nation's ever done. All they did was free up their market and allow the division of labor to do what it's supposed to do. Yeah, and the stuff that's gone overseas is stuff that we can't afford to build here anyway anymore. They're they're not communist in practice, not at all. Not anymore. To be communist in practice, they would have to stifle the division of labor. Right. They're communist as in... So, wait, wait, wait. Are, are, are you saying then that... Practically speaking, the United States is is a communist country. It, practically speaking, the United States is trying to be. Um, all of the bleeding hearts that push for socialism are obviously pushing for communism, which we all we all subscribe to communism at least tacitly to an extent. All of us do, except for maybe the guy sitting in this booth. I got an email yesterday just on the side here. And it showed a picture of Hugo. Hugo Yaves. Hugo Chavez. He's dead. Chavez. Yeah. I know. Hugo. I heard that he died like two days ago. Yeah. So it's a picture of him dead and then there's a little caption with George W. And he goes, how's that socialized medicine working out for you? <laughs> <laughs> and the point is, you know, Mr. Freedom and Democracy, George Bush, mocking dead Hugo Chavez. Right, and, because all you know, people in capitalist societies don't die. Right, so I wrote him back, and I was like, um, wasn't George W. the guy that gave us Medicaid Part D? Yep. That grew Medicaid huge, and isn't Medicaid a socialist program? In fact, he not only did that, that law actually forbade the federal government from getting the best deal from the drug companies and the pharmaceuticals. They had to buy the drugs for Medicaid at whatever price the drug company set. There was no negotiations. The Veterans, of, uh, the Veterans Administration is the only one that can negotiate drugs, pricing. So the federal government for Medicaid has to purchase the drugs at the price set by the drug company, which just in the last, since 2006 to now, caused them to have to pay over a trillion dollars more for those drugs than if they would have got to um, negotiate the terms and prices of those. So, Mr. Chavez, how's that medicine working? He's that socialized medicine working out for you? Yeah, well, guess what, George W.? You're the same kind of guy. <laughs> what I think is funny about it us? is when, it, when it's state-ran or socialist-ran um, health care, all the variables that wouldn't be insured in a capitalist type insurance program are magically insured like it would, things you have control over yourself that nobody would insure against like um giving yourself cancer for instance from uh tobacco use or things of that nature in socialist um health care plans all those variables are insured it wouldn't surprise me if the state started insuring us against things like setting our own house on fire, for instance. Things that we have total control over. Because this, the state has no regard for um, protecting itself because its money's uh, taken by force. 
They don't. They don't have to have uh, a vested interest in the in keeping their capital because their capital is harvested. The funny thing about that email I got it was sent to me by a staunch Republican, and that's why they thought it was funny because it's George Bush. Right, but if there would have been Obama saying that, we would have all mocked it. Right. Because George Bush didn't give us any socialism. I need to, one of those barf bags like they have on airplanes here in the studio on hand. He didn't give us socialism <laughs> or four trillion more in debt or unsustainable um, wars. None of those things matter. Oh, I know. Because he's a Republican. He is a Republican. And their platform's good. Oh, <laughs> I know what they were trying to make. That socialized medicine is wrong, but fascist medicine is correct. I thought fascism is socialism. Different forms. I thought socialism was communism. I thought communism was the ultimate I, form. It, it's all statism. Remember? Right, but I mean on the one, you know, you have your socialized medicine, but George W., he, he wants to force, he takes the, the more fascist approach by forcing you to purchase at prices that the corporation sets. So these these chemical companies, these drug companies that have created this market for themselves, by, in, well, an exclusive market, by getting a law passed that makes it basically that they can charge whatever they want, are, do they really think that they're going to end up giving themselves better medicine in the future by doing that? I just wonder if George Bush gets a cut or if he has any stock in any of those pharmaceuticals it's funny anybody listening could obviously see that a monopoly on something like that like the pharmaceutical companies have is bad it's bad all around obviously they're not going to any any aspect of it's bad you're not going to have more advancement in medicine if they have a monopoly on it. if they're able to um, force um, purchase of what they currently have where's the incentive to go out and expand and create more Find a cure for cancer, what, so on and what have you. But no, how come cures mean you don't need things anymore? Right, right. And it, it's like laws. If you don't have enough laws, I mean, what are, you, what are the police going to do? Well, any layman can see that a monopoly of that sort is bad, right? Not any. Anybody listening to us mock it would have to agree that it's bad. Mm, you have a lot of faith in people. I guess my point is is that why can't people see that same um, monopoly as in the state as being bad? If the state has a monopoly, I mean, philosophers and economists, I don't care what background they have, Keynesian or what have you, they agree that monopolies are bad. In fact, they actively get the state involved in putting down monopolies. Of course, the state will set up its own, but that's notwithstanding. Yeah, they like they, their own monopolies. Everybody agrees that monopolies are bad, but those same philosophers and economists will turn around and say the monopoly of the state isn't bad. Well, they create the monopolies in the first place. Every single monopoly is created by a state edict. If it weren't for the state, some kind of legislation stepping in, I mean, even like here in Alaska, the ACES thing, that everybody, oh, yay, we're finally going to get natural gas. That was a monopoly created by the state, giving exclusive right to TransCanada. Right, the free market won't allow monopolies. Yeah, but she was a conservative. Oh, Sarah Palin? Mm -hmm. Right. Even if you privatized roads and the Elliott Highway, for instance, ended up being owned by somebody and they started raping people to drive on it, somebody in short order would build a road right beside it and put that guy out of business. I would. I would, too. It'd be fun. <laughs> Let's take the call. 458-TALK is a number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Hi, it's Ron. Would you guys agree that no monopoly exists without the collusion of government? Pretty much. I think we just said that. Yeah. Good. Okay. Are you aware of last week's Time Magazine had a 36-page article about the medical uh, business and hospitals? No. Uh, it was mentioned on this station last Sunday, and I went out and got it, and it's a pretty darn thorough uh, explanation of what goes on in the hospitals and how they charge. Uh, one of our local people here did a book a couple of years ago called, uh, what the, let me think of the name of it, The Healthcare Morass. And this magazine article, last week's time, that'd be March 3rd, it goes 36 pages of explaining just how that morass is put together. So what was the end state of the article? Give us an example. Oh, 
they they have a thing. It's a it's a price book. Every hospital has their own price book. <laughs> and if I dig around here, I'll find it. But they said it's like a, 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 a crazy uncle that lives in the attic. They like they pretend they don't know where it came from or who invented it or anything else. But it's the outrageous prices that they're allowed to charge, or they've decided they can charge for someone who doesn't have insurance or is a sheik from Arabia or somewhere like that. And all the insurance companies and Medicare and everybody else starts there and negotiates down to whatever amount of price uh, improvement they can get. So that was probably the biggest thing. And then at the end of it, he says, you know, if you want to start doing anything at all, you tighten the antitrust laws because that's what it is. You know, they're they're. They got a, a handle on it, and there's nobody competing with them. There is no competition in that business. No, there isn't. But the problem, the problem isn't the antitrust laws. The problem is the government creating the laws in the first place because they have put so many restrictions and monopolies together themselves. I mean, you can't just go out. Joe Blow can't go out and start a hospital. You need it's to have totally a, impossible. You need to, to have do. permits. And permission. Well, they wouldn't let you do it because you already have you already have a hospital here. Exactly. Why do you need yeah. another one? Well, you could go you could go build a power company. No, you can't do that either. It was a joke. This is where our conversation started without the collusion of government. Right. So it's it's worth the time to at least read a few pages and decide if you can tolerate really reading the way that your way through the whole thing. Because as the various politicians come forward and tell us their their uh, uh, supposed solution. You can pretty well pick through it whether they're blowing smoke at you or not, or how much smoke they're blowing. Well, they're definitely yeah. <laughs> it's not a matter they're of blowing weather. smoke. It's just how much. I think yeah. we've made the point quite a few times, though, that um, the government is involved in every contract that you make, including um, things that, like marriage, for instance. Well, and the same thing can be said. I had this conversation with a uh, health insurance person. We were arguing about. Um, health insurance and monopolies of health insurance. And he was like, well, it's not monopolized and blah, blah, blah. And I said, okay, could you go start your own health insurance company? He's like, well, no, I'd have to get this and this and this. And I said, well, where are all these qualifications come from that you'd have to get before you start your own insurance company? He said, well, I'd have to get all these approvals from the state. And I said, well, why can't you as a free and independent person start your own collective insurance company and say you just insure five to 10 people? That's it, because that's all you can afford. But you have the resources to insure these five to ten people. Why can't you do that? Well, because the state won't allow something like that to happen. So, because there's a monopoly in the insurance industry, they get to charge us whatever the heck they want to. If anyone could go out and start an insurance company for medica uh, um, medical insurance, then you would have, let's just say there's 100 people in town that decide they could insure 10 well, there's a thousand, and on and on and on. You would get competition. Then the big guys that had the monopolies would have to go, man, we, we need those thousand people back. Well, how are you going to get them back? We're going to have to lower our prices. All of it, like you said in the very beginning of the call, it's all stems or, from government monopoly or through regulation. Or raise our, um, either lower your prices or raise your um, quality. Quality, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, the word I was looking for in the beginning is charge master, and that's their internal price list that almost nobody pays. Hmm. Except but it lets, for that's the way they can start their negotiating with insurance companies and Medicare and people like that who will come in there and say, hey, we're not going to pay anywhere near what you're asking here. And they come down, down, down. Except for the poor folks that don't have insurance or whatever you just walk in there well and part of that too it's just like the military part of the the reason that they're so high in the first place is because of things like medicaid and medicare it's just like our home prices and property values in the north star borough why are they so high because we have a military establishment here and they get a certain amount of money every month for rent so automatically are you going to charge let's just well, say hypothetically if if the soldier here gets eighteen hundred dollars a month to rent somewhere. Are you going to rent it to him for twelve hundred or eighteen hundred? Mm -hmm. Going to be eighteen hundred. So it's a it's a false economy. I mean, property tax or our property values are totally false and inflated here. But the same thing applies to, like you said, with medicine and medical insurance and hospitals. The whole thing. It's all 
based on government monopolies. Government supported monopolies. Right. Well, well without the government, they there could wouldn't not, be no monopoly. They, yeah, they yeah, wouldn't be. Yeah. They couldn't they, succeed, well, succeed because someone would come in and, and compete with them. There has like never GVA. been a monopoly in in nature. Every monopoly that has ever existed has existed because of some law that came first that created the possibility and in some cases directly created the monopoly. So, so yeah, you guys this, got it. Thanks. Thanks for the call. Uh, this you know town's what? full of it, too. I mean, you could go... Definitely full of it. Every, yeah. <laughs> no, monopolies. I mean, we look all over the monopolies, too. I can like help myself. The refineries, the GVEA, the borough government, all monopolies. DOT. And that's what we get. Bad medicine. There's no incentive to give us good medicine. All right, you got it on Patriots Lament right here on KFAR's Local Talk Radio. Join us online, KFAR660.com, and on your smartphone with the free TuneIn Radio app. We've got one line open out of our four. Bad medicine. Feel free to call in, 458-TALK. All right, welcome back to uh, Patriots Lament here on KFAR. I'm Steve Floyd, the men with the face made for radio. Basically, I am the monkey behind the machine here to make sure that the message Gets out as they can say, as they say, you can't stop the signal, right? Do rock this? and roll a little bit. I don't know about that. You can stop the signal. Is that what you're saying? I'm thinking you can't really. You get, enough, you, can. you get enough people plugged into the signal, though, we'll just find a different way to, to spread it. I mean, yeah, in fact, we'll be in a van radio, somewhere. Baby. Pirate radio, come on. Well, well, even even if the, I'm, I'm thinking in terms of like if the North Koreans launch their nuke. Like they've threatened to this week. Oh, that'd be just awesome. Open the air and fall back down. On well, them. <laughs> even if let's say worst case scenario, they manage to explode it, and we end up having an EMP, and we've got no more radio, no more TV, no more internet. We would still be able to find a way to get the signal out. I mean, you look at it, and I can. We don't have any printing presses left anymore in America. Everything is all now done by computer, so those would all be gone. But I can still write. I can actually still legibly write, so that other people can read what I've written. So at the very least, we can start circulating some pamphlets that are handwritten, right? Go back to the Go old... Back to the good old days. Old, old, Have old pamphlet days. wars. Common sense. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. We got three lines on hold. Gentlemen, where are we going? To them. 458-TALK is a number. Good morning, caller. Who's, who's this? This is Winston. Winston, what's on your mind Hello, today? Hello, Winston. Hey. Oh, oh yeah. All governments... Uh, it's a business. Uh, uh, it goes all the way back to uh, uh, 1789. Uh, 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 this monopoly of, of government that we've got was formed to protect business. Uh, and, and the government became a business. Uh, 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 it's just uh, it, it, it's, it's ridiculous. Uh, they tightened up on their monopoly in, in 1860, and they tightened up on it again in... Uh, 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 with the Fourteenth Amendment, they tightened up on it again, and uh, uh, they're they're just solidifying the business. And eventually, we'll become communist and uh, uh, or some form of totalitarian government uh, uh, that allows absolutely no dissent or uh, 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 competition. I mean, it's just uh, 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 it, it's going to end that way. Aren't we at that? Point now, though, where there's no competition or dissent allowed. Well, uh, uh, we we can still dissent because we are speaking at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, just the there, fact there's that de- we're there's airing. just degrees of that, though. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I guess uh, that would come down to your measure of degree, right? And you think of, think about this for just a minute, Winston. If it were not for somebody like you calling into a program like, like this. And talking openly like it, other people would not feel the freedom to talk against it. Because right now we are living in an atmosphere of oppression where if you, I mean, think about it. If you go into your workplace tomorrow or Monday and you and you openly criticize President Obama or you openly criticize Governor Parnell or you openly criticize Mayor Lou Hopkins, what are your coworkers going to, re- how are they going to react? To where you? I work? Well, no, I, I, I you, say, you, depends you, on where you, you, work. you own your business. You own your own business. Holy so I, I, moly. Where I work, we'd have it'd be go time. Everyone there. Mm-hmm. I guess. Yeah. Uh, 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 
until we get it to where uh, 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 people all over the country just uh, 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 they're a joke. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 the government is a joke. It's a, 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 a bunch of gangsters, uh, um, and the thing about it is they're not even as, as honest as Al Capone was. Uh, um, um, Al Capone, you know, conceded that he was a gangster. Our government won't. Yeah, at least he uh, didn't lie about it. Right, right. That's what I'm getting at. Uh, uh, they're dishonest. Uh, you was talking about this medical business. Uh, they keep talking about the amount of research that all the, the medical companies are involved in. They're not researching to, to, to cure something. What they're researching is is to find another drug that they can patent to replace the ones they've already got a patent on. Don't matter if it works any better or not. It just as long as they can replace the patent, so they can keep charging the top dollar for it. Mm-hmm. Um, 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 if we get the business out of government uh, uh, and the government out of business. Uh, uh, as long as people can make money uh, uh, in one form or another, uh, uh, and money is property. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, as long as we make money, uh, uh, some some value to exchange one another for things of value. Well, uh, 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 we're in great shape. All we need is government to protect our property uh, and keep other people from coming in here and trying to take it away from us. Yeah. Yep, you're you're right. I mean, not to be a jerk or anything, but money isn't really property. Money's a me is it um it's described as a medium of exchange in lieu of property. Well, um 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 I I go by the Frederick Bastier uh, um consideration that uh, um money is it, it representing a value. Right. Uh, that value becomes a property. Sure. It's your uh, property to exchange for something else, right? It's a it's 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 property accumulated in a in a portable trans you know a, a medium. Yeah, I think what you're to go back a little bit. What you said something about until people understand that government's a joke. I think more and more people are. The problem is they don't know what to do about it, or they just they think that the the answer is more government. Or no. different government, or this one's a joke. So if we get the right jokers in there, they won't be as. I think that's the ultimate problem. The ultimate goal for us to get is the people to understand not only they're a joke, but the system's a joke, and you don't need to replace it with something. You need to get rid of it. Oh, uh, uh, now, 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 uh, I'm, I'm don't want to get you in any trouble or anything of that nature. But uh, earlier, you were talking about term limits. Mm-hmm. Uh, if a uh, uh, if a representative is is honest, uh, let him stay in there as long as he wants to. If he's dishonest, if we string him up, uh, you know, a short rope, a tall light pole, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 that be the end of their term. You know, and we just vote for somebody to replace him. That happened a lot. Well, I think that used to happen a lot. <laughs> how can how can anybody in any term be honest, though? No, well, some of them can. You can't deny the fact that there's honest. There's been honest people that have gone into government. Sure. To Very engage true. in a dishonest um, dishonest business. I mean, you know, Not all of them every time. There have been lots of honest people that have gone into organized crime throughout history. Uh, I mean, if you, if you think about it, I mean, the, probably some of the most honest people have been the, the dons, the, the ones that, that go out there and enforce their will on other people honestly and, and say straight up front, I'm going to extort from you, I'm going to steal from you, but then I, I'm, but I'm going to protect you. The Don Julio's? You know, I, I, if you think about it, though, it's the same way with government. The, if you choose to go into government, you are choosing to go into the business of extortion and violence. And can you be an honest person? Absolutely. As long as well, it's, it, 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 it's it's going back to Al Capone. Uh, 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 when he offered you protection, you got protection. Absolutely, you did. He he was a right. man of his word. You got protected. And the, it's, it's like the casinos uh, uh, down in Las Vegas, New Jersey, and places like that. You know, uh, 
they uh, 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 they take a lot lower cut than the 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 the, the federal government does, and they do excellent. <laughs> Yeah, but they're private uh, businesses. I mean, uh, to if make you'll private. remember the, IR, the the IRS, they 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 once uh, 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 seized a, a, a house of prostitution, and they lost money on it. Uh, only the government could lose money running a whorehouse. <laughs> I think. Really. Later. Thanks for the call, Winston. Four five eight talk is the number. Should we go take another call? Good morning. This is Patriots the Men. Who's this? Yeah, Steve. Hey. Hey, yeah, that guy had a lot to say. I kind of agree with him. I have the same trouble he does, though, sometimes staying on point. There's, it's what's going on in America today. It seems like a, it's not like a, a two collision, a collision of two locomotives. It's like nine of them coming together, and it's been going on ever since. Well, I guess Bush got in there, but we didn't really notice it until Obama got in. How do you feel about that? With Bush? Bush and Obama, I mean, Bush, the whole thing, it, it seems like everything's starting to seem so staged and, and so contrary, like this DHS buying all the bullets, but they want to take our guns. They're demonizing everybody that's got a right thought, doing everything for the wrong reason. It's just anybody that looks at history can see that, you know, they're turning the, turning the crank and squeezing on us. Yeah, with, it, trying to make everybody mad and turn against each other and just lying to us constantly. No, it's a good way to do is to divide and conquer has always been an excellent exactly. way to to get your way with people to dominate people is divide and conquer. And with George Bush, the greatest thing for the state anyways, was that you can see how rapidly our rights were degenerated just in those eight years. It was amazing. And it all came from the the guise of a foreign enemy that was going to destroy us without the state protecting us, which was the terrorism thing. And unfortunately, because of everyone's hyper retardedness, they just were like, close their eyes and let everyone, you know, let's, let's pass the Patriot Act. It doesn't matter now because we need that to protect us from it. But it was George Bush, so he didn't have the right wing Republicans weren't complaining about it because, well, George goes to church, so he must be okay. Whatever, he can't have any ill intent for us. Um, <laughs> so it rapidly went down, and basically all you have with, with Obama is nothing but a continuance of George Bush. That's right. all it is. But, See, that's the thing. It's, there is really only one party. It's become clear to me, and I think a lot of people are seeing it now. Just to even talk about Republican, Democrats, such a waste of time. Well, there's, re there's only one entity. Yeah, the the state. they're feeding themselves. Like the guy before, he was trying, he almost got to it. It's like, the, and I've heard you guys say before, it's like the government, if you let it go, it's like a wildfire. It'll just take over, and eventually you'll end up in a totalitarian situation. And I don't think that all of their policies are um, necessarily to divide and conquer. I mean, like the gun control issue, if you had a monopoly on, um, on um, protection, it would be in your best interest to disarm uh, the people you're protecting. If it was a free market um, scenario and there was more than one protection agency providing um, services, you would want everybody to be as armed as possible because uh, your liability would go down. Just like you know, you give um, um, lower prices to people with good driving records, so on and so forth. But if you're the monopolist, um, you would definitely want to disarm everybody. I think that's more the intent there uh, behind all states that disarm their people. Well, for one, if you're disarmed, then the only protection you have is from the state, so you're right, not relying on them in the first place. And plus, then, if you're the only one that has the access to the kind of weapons that have been outlawed, then you can control who gets them. For instance, yeah, you could send some down to Mexico to the drug lords. That's a, that's bogus. The, the CIA has been running dope since they criminalized it yep. right after they re 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 uh, uh, let, what ended the prohibition of alcohol. It's yeah. kind of like the FBI um, starting this war the on FBI terrorism and then creating the, uh, all the terrorists. IRS. That's what they do, and they hide evidence. You know, that's, that's what they do mainly. They hide evidence and set up patsies. Everybody sees that now. Well, whatever entity the government is protecting us from, they're usually the cause. Well, the IRS, that's not even a, a, a U.S. Uh, government thing. And, you know, the, even on, like, uh, 
re, uh, you know, tax returns, it says right there, the IMS, it's got, it says you get it from the IMS. The whole thing's so strewn out, they practically turned this global now. I noticed that Obama immediately put 60,000 of those uh, border guards on furlough. It's like he's just, you know, that's intentional, oh, contrary to the best interests of this country. Yeah, the first thing they're always going to do is to do the most irrational thing. They'll always put the most irrational thing up on hold. Well, this so doesn't everyone any will kind of out. representation of, of the will of the people. It doesn't make any common sense. You know, I feel pretty much like with like with all the cops nowadays. They're I heard that they have a rule that seventy percent have to come from outside of the locale. That's that's commie sounding right there. That's you know, so they'll be more likely to be harsh with the people or won't feel so bad about it because they're I, not familiar. The only that's just one thing. You I know, disagree they're so slightly geared up though. Anymore. If they're so geared up anymore, it's like they're ready for God knows what, and they walk around. You know, and what's this about eight stops mandatory? Is that true that the, they passed a, a quota for every cop local? That was uh, that was a quota that wasn't a quota. No, because he said it wasn't a quota. quota. Oh, because the police chief, he had, he had to send out a memo saying it's not a quota. He just, there's a minimum number of contacts you have to have. It's like Obamacare is not a tax, and then, you know, then it is a tax, and now it's okay, even though the, the whole thing is sell it. Man, I'm so tired of being lied to. I know I, everybody else feels like this. I, I disagree with you that... Um, the the people don't want that though because the people go out and vote. I mean they're voting oppression and extortion on, voting, on each other. Come on, dude. And and elections have voting? consequences. That's a, that's a fiasco. No, I, I don't. I don't. I'm not talking about the outcome. I'm not talking about the effect. The cause in general is to go out and force your will and, and tell uh, the oh, American the American people before, no dude. longer I want. That. Everybody's on food stamps now. If, if they weren't on food stamps, there'd be bread lines just like in the depression. We know that, don't we? There would be. There would be. Yeah. It would be an uh, interesting ordeal, that's for sure. Yeah, or if it just had the food stamps and had to use them at the, at the counter, it'd, it'd be such a clog. You know, this whole electronic thing is set up to be really convenient until they turn it off. And when they turn it off, people are going to be in a bad condition. They can do it at any time. Just like with that chip. What do you guys ever talk about the chip that's in the Obamacare? I've read it several times and watched lots of videos about it. You know, they say it could be in the card as a class three thing, mm -hmm. or it could be in a class two. That's an implant. It's right there in the thing. It's already, oh, I mean, they they have chips in your um, passports already. I know, dude. Look at, I mean, just look at what's going on. You guys, I mean, why beat around the bush? I don't want to get all Alex Jones or anything. Well, that's the, dude, that's dude, exactly the, the point, though. The we're not world, we're not beating so around the bush. On the world. When you look at the ownership and you follow the little lines, you look at the corporation connections, there's really only a few people, and they're holding on to the means of production as if the whole world was already in a, in a global government. Right, right but that, that's efficiency. the whole point, is that talking about those things is is beating around the bush. Those are going down rabbit holes to talk about um, all the effects of, of the state. When the, yeah. the problem is the state. That's right. And we can go and address the power elites. We can go address um, corporate monopolies. We can go address a million different things. But it comes down to the individual uh, oppressing his neighbor uh, via the state, uh, giving their tacit, it, at the very minimum, their tacit support to the state. Uh, well, without it, without our hands and our eyes and our ears and our labor and so on and so forth, what is the state? What does the state create if we did not create it for it? Um, can okay. one can Obama do anything by himself? No, he's a puppet. We all know that. Well, he's a puppet of us. No, he's not. He's a puppet of the richest men in the world, and like could, the people that own the central bank. Right, but you even know, the richest a, men in the, the world. Who leave, the guys that sit up there and talk about cutting the population down, they've been doing it for 30 years. Yes, but the richest men in the world can't do anything without our support and our consent to do so. They're bouncing the armies from, from country to country, practicing uh, terrorism, uh, supposedly drills, mixing them all together putting them in blue hats and calling them the good guys, having them go out and kill people. All right, and all those guys, aren't they your neighbors? Those, well, I don't those, have any Czechoslovakian neighbors. 
I don't have any Chinese neighbors. Right, but it all comes down to consent. The rich elite class of the world can't do anything unless the people go along and do it for them. Who's paid to bribe and who's paid to do it, but whoever's paying them. <laughs> who's going to do it for them? Well, I'll tell you what, they're getting ready to do something to us. You guys know that. You can feel it. I, 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 guess, I guess, but the question is, is did, did Heinrich Himmler ever forcibly grab a Jew and shove him in a camp? You want to go there? Yeah. You want to ask yourself about the whole thing with the uh, how many Jews died? Do you want to talk like that? Because that's, be, that's, that's verboten. You know, if you start talking that way, somebody might come and talk to you from the ADL or something. You can't do that. You're touching the nerve. Yeah, I, but the whole point is that it... About, let's talk about the hol, hol, Holodor or whatever it was when uh, all the people starved to death. Himmler, that, could have not, Himmler did not fun? throw one Jew into the gulag. He got the people to do it for him. That's the point. Your consent is what gives the rich, powerful elite the ability to do what uh -huh. they want to do. So we have to re pull our consent from them. <laughs> Okay, that, that's why an, an American revolution is a facade. I mean, that, that's why Josh and I don't ever uh, subscribe to a violent answer. Because we could go out tomorrow, all, everybody, and rise up against government, and everybody just start shooting everybody. And, uh, that's and, what and, they and, want. It's going to happen somewhat anyway. In it short order, we would what? have what we have today, because people are, would institute what they know, because fundamentally they agree with the premise of the state. What we have today is practically no rights whatsoever. And we wouldn't have we wouldn't have any on the other side of a, a of a second American Revolution. Look, there's so many people in prison in America. It's it's ridiculous not to say that right. But you're prison. you're bringing up all kinds of effects without touching on the cause. Yeah, I mean, what is the cause? The richest men in the world are controlling everything. The means of production. And we're coming towards a one-world government. I've never had Here. any of the power elite ever approach and force me to do anything. This bogus money ever. that we're handling, this paper, these central banks, that's an intentional control mechanism. Look look across the river from where we are right now. What building is that? The borough. That's the borough building. Right over there at the local level, local level. And they have been, like they have been voting so away much. our freedoms. They have been voting away... Our ability to govern ourselves, I mean, this whole Agenda 21 thing, our borough oh, yeah. has signed on to that, and that has not been the world's richest elite doing that. That has been the people that you and I have sent to office by participating in the election um, process. Dude, that, that shouldn't even have, Who developed Agenda 21? That's the richest people in the world sitting up there in the UN. That's their Without plan. It, with, lacking the power to actually enforce they it. Had no they power don't to do get it. elected. They put, choose themselves to go there. That's what's so hypocritical. And then they want to go out and supposedly spread democracy. How did, how did Luke Hopkins get over there in that borough building, friend? He got Who voted is Luke, Luke, Luke Hopkins? Where did he grow up? Where did he go to school? Who are his neighbors? How much money does he make? You're talking about effects, though. What the problem is that we're trying to point out is that it's the consent of the people why these things happen. Without the people's consent, nothing can happen. Right. The people's consent. And, the, yep. and what about our uh, government and control of the barrel of a gun? Who said that? Something like that? Mom. Yep. Are you kidding? Under You're the, trying to make an argument with me when all I'm under saying the is control, the people's control. consent. I agree. No, absolutely we agree with that. What I'm saying is the only reason it is is because the people have consented, consented for it to be so. Without Did the I have consent of the people. Did I born with a birth certificate that says I'm somebody's property? No, you haven't necessarily, but the majority of the people have consented. Until the majority of the people remove their consent, it won't Nobody stop. Nobody in this country is hardly aware of what you and I are aware of about the state of uh, That's bankruptcy. the point of this radio show. Who, who picks the treasurer of the United States? Oh. Who picks him? Uh, who knows? Well, Somebody it? says the president does. That's what's supposed to be in the law, but we no, all know. No, we know. The president doesn't. Him. Right, exactly. I know, but that's the point. That's why you're calling in. That's why we do the show every Saturday, to get more people to understand what's going on and to remove the consent of what's happening. And if, if, if the people's arms aren't building the blocks, then the state can't achieve anything that it wants to. The, government, the elites of the world, and I'm not arguing that they're there, that they're powerful, that they have an agenda. They, would they have can't no power. do it without us allowing it to happen. That's basically all we're saying. 
Okay. Well, I like your guys' show, and I, I know you can only speak, get so much said. You know, you got to meet them where they are in these conversations. No, that's my a lot of it. I mean, that's why we Here's bring up I constitutional things. I think they're coming things. to get us, and there ain't a darn thing we can do about it. Well, they may be coming to get us, but I think there's something I know. that can that be done. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks. You know, re resist, resist, brother. Keep resisting. Thanks for the call. Four five eight talk is the number. Take another. The call odds now. don't matter anymore. Yeah. Good morning, caller. All right, let's try this one. Good morning. Who's there? Morning. This is George. George, what's on your mind? Oh, I love you guys' show. I tune in all the time. Uh, can't believe I haven't listened more. And, yeah, good uh, <laughs> I'm a big fan of LRC. Been right, reading L LRC for years now, and I was really psyched when you said. We're going to get the, uh, Mr. Grigg on. That sounds pretty cool. Yeah, so. I'm stoked about that. Also, uh, Jeffrey Tucker has agreed to come on. We just, we've, oh, okay. we've put it off a little bit because yeah. our schedules are up and down, and so we don't want to schedule them. And then, you know, yeah. they have lives too, so we want to make sure that we're going to be able to give them our I actually time. went down to the uh, Lou Rockwell Center, the uh, Ludwig von Mises Institute in uh, Auburn a few years back. Wow. And we got a personal tour with uh, one of the ladies there, and we got to walk past Lou's desk. I didn't get to say hi to him, but... Uh, we got to go into the library there and look at all the stuff. It's pretty neat. So that's I'm sweet. Thinking. Did you you know we had Lou Rockwell on the show here a few months back? I heard about that. I actually listened to the podcast online. I went to their or no, I no, I was listening on the air. I think that one day. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, that so. guy's awesome. Incidentally, we've got archives at uh, Patriots Lament. Yeah, on, on the on our YouTube channel, yeah. which is I'll check that out. Radio, Radio, Radio Free, Free Fairbanks. Fairbanks. Also, and, and interestingly enough, we're right about at the end of the show here, the time when we need to tell people how you can get a hold of the Do I have time to read something real quick? Oh, uh, you got about a minute. Yeah, I can do it in a minute. Is that okay? Yeah. Thanks this for is, calling in, though. Call in when we have a little more time. This is hot people from... Can, people, they don't fight back because they're less, they follow the new rule that Jesus gave out, you know, turn the other cheek. And that's what it all boils down to. People don't want to fight back. Yeah, yeah, that's a good. We can have a discussion yeah, about that. Next on that. So this, is, the this is from Call Hans me. Hans Hop, my hero, by the way. He says, predictably, under democratic conditions, the tendency of every monopoly to increase prices and decrease quality will be only more pronounced. Instead of a prince who regards the country as his private property, a temporary caretaker is put in charge of the country. He does not own the country, but as long as he is in office, he is permitted to use it to his and his protege's advantage. He owns its current use, use of fruct, but not its capital stock. This will not eliminate exploitation. To the contrary, it will make exploitation less calculated and carried out with little or no regard to the capital stock. Short-sighted. More Moreover, the perversion of justice will proceed even faster. Instead of protecting pre-existing private property, Democratic government will become a machine for the redistribution of existing property rights in the name of illusionary social security. All right. PatriotsLament.blogspot.com. Check it out. And on YouTube at the Radio Free Fairbanks channel. We will see you next week. 9 a.m.